Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, we have a train that's crossing a railroad crossing 20 meters long. The time that it takes for the train to cross the crossing is 2.4 meters. And while the train is crossing the crossing, the train is accelerating at 1.6 meters per second square. What is not known is the initial velocity and the final velocity during that 2.4 seconds while the train is crossing the railroad crossing. And they're also asking us to find the time required to reach a speed of 32 meters per second after the train has passed the crossing. So that's why we need to find the initial and final velocity. And then at that point, how long will it take for the velocity then to get up for the train then to get up to 32 meters per second? So how do we do that? Well, a good start is to draw a velocity versus time graph that kind of gives us a graphical perspective of the problem. We don't know the initial velocity, we don't know the final velocity, but we do know that the acceleration is 1.6 meters per second squared, so the slope is equal to 1.6. We also know that during that 2.4 seconds indicated right here, the train travels 20 meters, which then shows you that the area underneath the curve must equal 20. So based upon that, we should be able to solve the problem. We have two unknowns, which means we're going to need two equations. The first equation, we can use the slope to relate V final, V initial, and the slope. So we can say by definition, the slope, whoop, I get ahead of myself here. The, the slope is equal to the rise over the run. And so in this case, we can say that the slope, which is 1.6, is equal to the rise, which is the change in the velocity, that would be v final minus v initial, divided by the distance to cover, the, the run, which is 2.4. So we can then say that v final minus v initial is equal to 1.6 times 2.4, and 1.6 times 2.4, which is... 3.84. So now we have a relationship between the initial and the final velocity. We know that the difference between them is 3.84. The next thing we need to do is find what those actual velocities are. So what we can do is use the concept of the area here. And what we can do is we can split the area up into two regions. We can say that this is A1 and this is A2, and together A1 plus A2 should add up to 20 meters. So we can say that A1 plus A2 is equal to 20. Now A1 is simply just a rectangle. The height will be V0 and the width will be 2.4. So 2.4 times V0 is the first area. The second area is a triangle, so we use one half. The base, which is 2.4, times the height, which is v final minus v initial. And now luckily we have an equation that tells us what that is equal to. So we can say that 2.4 v initial plus one half this, which is 1.2 times 3.84. And so we have, oh, wait a minute. I forgot my equals 20 and equals 20. There we go. And so now we can say that 2.4 V initial plus 3.84 times 1.2 is 4.608 is equal to 20. And so now we can subtract that from that. So 2.4 V initial is equal to 20 minus 4.608. And then divide both sides by 2.4. Now we know what our V initial is equal to. So we subtract that from 20 and divide by 2.4 and we have initial velocity of 6.413 meters per second. We keep a few extra decimal places just so we don't have a rounding error. So now we can find V final. So V final is equal to 3.84 plus V initial and that would be 3.84 plus our V initial which is 6.413. And so at plus 3.84, we get that's 10.25 meters per second for our V final. And then finally, we want to know how long it's going to take then to reach 32 meters per second. And we could then use the equation that V final is equal to V initial 
plus a times t. And of course, v final will now be our new v. Uh, v my v initial will be my new v final. So this is going to go in here. And then we find the, the new v final, which will be the 32 meters per second. And we need to find out how long it will take. So from here, we can say that the time is going to be equal to the distance between those two. And just so don't, we don't get confused, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call this a big V and I'll call this a big V to indicate that those are not the same velocities as the V initial and V final we had in our first part of the problem. So we can say that T is going to be equal to V final minus V initial divided by A. Now our V final this time will be the 32 meters per second. V initial will be the final velocity after the train crosses the, the railroad crossing, so that would be minus 10.25, and we divide that by the acceleration the train had of 1.6 meters per second squared. For a train, I think that's quite an acceleration, but we'll ignore that for now. And so that means the time is going to be uh, plus 32 divided by 1.6. It looks like about 13.6 seconds, so time is equal to 13.6 seconds. That's how much more time the train, would, the train would need to get up to a speed of 32 meters per second. That's quite a locomotive. Anyway, that's how it's done.